be talking about the number one way to attract quality men consistently. Mm -hmm. So I have a few questions I want to ask you about this, Ken. But before we jump right in, tell me why you decided to choose this particular topic today. Well, I thought it might be of interest to the audience. <laughs> right, right. I think it's also, we, we, there's a lot of misinformation about, you know, what's going to attract and the catch word that is out there is quality men, right? I never find any quality men. Well, then obviously whatever we're doing isn't working. And there's actually a very simple way to attract quality men that oftentimes isn't even mentioned. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So um, you, you say there's a distinction or a difference between a turn on and a tune in when it mm -hmm. comes to uh, attracting quality men. Tell us a little bit about that, if you would. Yeah. So most people are like, oh, you know, I want that chemistry. I want that sizzle, whatever, that turn on, right? And turn on is from the external, right? It's from the outside. You, you look really sexy. You look really hot, whatever it is, right? Same with the guy, right? He, oh, he's so handsome. He's so sexy. Tune in is actually the deeper connection, the emotional, the energetic, that, that true deep core connection. So since we're giving you feedback on, on how men view this, I, I've done, I don't even know how many times I've, I've done this process with, with, co-ed groups where we have men on one side, women on the other, and I'm facilitating their questions. And every single time, one of the women will ask, what do we need to do to get the next day, to get the second day, to get you to call us back? And across the board, and this has been over years and years, all ethnicities, all age brackets, all you know financial status, every single time, the men will say some version of, you know, there's just something about you. There's a vibe or an energy or something that, that draws me in right? And makes me want to spend more time with you. He didn't say it's your little black dress. It was your sexy red shoes. It was your hot red lipstick. Those things are what we've been told, right? You got to look a certain way. You got to present yourself a certain way. But the problem is, and this is, it can be hard to hear. But the problem is that all that does is trigger his sexual attraction. So the men who are drawn to that and call you back, on that level are just looking for sex. Mm -hmm. And how many of you have that? Well, how come they're always looking for sex? Because they haven't made any connection with you on an energetic level. They're not feeling that. You're probably holding back because you don't want to really put too much out there and you're afraid you want him to call you back first. But if he calls you back because of the external, the turn on, the guys that are calling you back for that are not the guys you want. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want sex and that's it, that's fine too. I don't want to disregard that. But what I'm saying is if you really want a deeper connection, it's not going to happen because of the turn on. It's going to happen because of the tune in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like this distinction you're making here, Ken, and I think it's really profound. What's the key then for someone to have a connection that's more along the lines of a tune in? What are some keys for that? Yeah, so first of all, you've got to understand where it's going to take you. Because if you don't, you'll be like, well, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to get lousy guys anyhow, right? So when you're actually showing up, I call it blooming. You're really being your fullest expression of you. You're being authentic. You're being confident. You're being you, just like you would be with your best girlfriend, right? Just being carefree, not worrying about, oh, I think he wouldn't like that, or I'm too weird this way, or my laugh's too loud. But you're being you. What it ends up doing is it triggers a man where we're literally compelled. And, and I want you to understand the word compelled. It's not because we want this. We can't not do it. Compelled means there's something greater driving us forward. And we're compelled to, we want to spend time with you. We want to contribute. We want to take care of you. We want to make you happy. This is what happens when there's that match, when there's that, ah, oh, there's something about her. So that's the payoff. Now, what you have to do is, it's literally how you become magnetic, right? We all heard about, oh, I want to be a man magnet. Well, here's how you do it. Get your pencil out. So think about it. And I'm going to use a car analogy because I'm a guy. Think about you just found this amazing old car, right? And it's a killer car. It's the car you've already wanted. Let's say it's a Mustang GT. You've been looking for this. And it's got this great engine. It needs some work on the, the engine. It needs a tune-up. And it needs some body work. Right. So it's not perfect, but it's going to get you there. Now, if your goal is to get to the finish line faster, whatever that goal is, let's say it's to find a partner, which is going to get you there faster, 
doing the body work so it looks nice or doing the internal work on the engine so it runs faster? The engine work, the internal work. Bingo, that's the ticket. We have to do the internal work. So we have this myth out there in our culture that it's the external. I was just working with a woman earlier today and she's told me, you know, oh, I was, all these things were, were really driving for me. I got to the perfect weight I wanted to be and I felt good about my body and how I looked and all this stuff. And it was all this external stuff. And she goes, but my confidence wasn't there, even though I thought that was what was going to give it to me because she hadn't done the internal work. So it's like we think if we lose the weight, that's the ticket when really it's losing the baggage, it's losing the, the, the falsehoods that we're living under. If we believe we're not lovable, if we believe we're whatever it is, it doesn't matter. We only attract bad guys, that guys take advantage of us. We're going to attract that, right? So we have to do the internal work. And it's not always that fun <laughs> because we got to face the reality of what we've been doing and take responsibility for what we've been doing has led us to where we are now. Well, and you might say it's not only, it's not maybe that fun, but it's also kind of not sometimes what we think of as being like the sexy work, right? Like the sexier kind of work. And also, Ken, it's also easier to say, oh, it's it's that I'm not meeting the right men. It's that, you know, the men that I like are not attracted to me or whatever. It's like, if it's something out there, if we can put it out there, at least in our minds, if we can blame it on the external forces that we don't have any control over, or we feel we don't have any control over, then that kind of takes the responsibility off of us. We can yeah. stay in more of a victim mode. This just isn't working out for me. Rather yeah. than being aware of the actual power that we have to guide our own lives and transform what is possible in our own lives. And I Absolutely. think it's an easy thing to hide behind. You know, it's an easy thing to hide behind because then we don't have to do some of this work, which is sometimes not fun often not sexy sexy and many times even hard let's just be honest it's hard to sometimes really be honest and look that closely at what's going on inside ourselves yeah yeah and everything you say is 100 percent true michelle and i think the other piece of that is you know we like you were talking about you know putting on the outside we blame the kind of guys we've been attracting or whatever it is the reality is there's also a resistance to doing the work because they're like, well, how come I have to change? Why don't they change, right? It feels like people are saying there's something wrong with you. I wanna be really clear. I'm not saying there's something wrong with you. I'm inviting you to bloom and be your full self that you're not letting yourself be. And that's the ticket. So when you show up, so I always use this example, um, the movie, Something About Mary. Here's this movie, there's this gal, and every guy she encounters is just like over the moon for her. But if you think about her character, Cameron Diaz's character, people are like, oh yeah, well, she's this beautiful starlet. Yeah, but her character is just being herself. She's totally quirky. She's got this crazy laugh. She loves hanging out with her, her brother. She does all these things that people would think, those aren't sexy. And these guys are smitten. They can't help it. And what do they say? There's something about her. It's got nothing to do with her look. It's got, it's something about her energy, how she's showing up from the inside out is the key. So it's not a you have to change. It's actually you have to embrace you and bring you forward. Now, what's more fun than being yourself? That's what you love doing with your girlfriends. So when we let ourselves do that everywhere, we attract the things that match us and we repel the ones that don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I know that you would probably say this is how we're also likely to be the most magnetic to the right person. Because if you're being authentically you, if they can actually feel you, see you, really get who you are, you're more likely to draw in or attract the right kind of person, the person that is going to be attracted to the real you, not the facade, not who you're pretending to be, not this trying to look exactly perfect in every way. Yes. They're going to be attracted to the real you. And at the end of the day, I think that's what we all want. We want an authentic connection where we're loved and accepted for exactly who we are, where we can really be seen by this other person, we can see them, and we don't feel like we have to put up this mask or this front, or we don't feel like we're trying to penetrate a mask or a front in another person. And I think that's a, I think that's a common challenge for humanity in general. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And one of the ways that can fortify you in doing this work is to actually engage with real examples of how it works instead of just the stuff on TV or on the internet. Because we see that and it looks like, well, yeah, but it only works because they're beautiful or they're, you know, they've got all these special qualities. But if you go places, just regular places, like go to the airport or go to some place where a lot of people are gathered, you will see every possible combination of body type and hair color and age and all these different things with partners. So it's not just for the exclusive people on the outside that look a certain way, but we get that programming over and over again. Yeah, but it works for them. Yeah, but it works for them. It doesn't matter. You just have to show up as you and you will attract that. And I want to clarify something because I had somebody say this to me one time and I used this something about Mary uh, comment. Again, it's a movie because their comment was, yeah, but there are all these creepy guys after her. That was because it was a movie. They were trying to make fun of the situation. They were making every one of those guys, other than I think Brett Favre or whoever the famous person was, had some kind of weird thing, right? And Ben Stiller. But it was like, that was just to make an exception. But the reality is you will attract who you are. And if you're withdrawn and closed off and guarded, guess who you're going to attract? The guy who's not open and doesn't want to connect and doesn't want to open up. Oh, no surprise. That's who's attracted to what you're offering. So offer the real you. Because that's not the real you. You weren't like that until somebody taught you that. As a little kid, you weren't like that. Then you got told whatever you were doing wasn't okay, or people don't like that, or people like this better. And you started to modify who you are. Mm -hmm. Well, and a couple other distinctions. I'm glad you mentioned that point, Ken, about the movie. But a couple other distinctions I think might also be relevant here. And one is just because you attract some people that you may, that you may not choose does not mean you're not also going to be attracting in the right person for you. I mean, there's this is a big world that we live in. And there's all different kinds of people. If you're um, you know, if you're a woman who's putting yourself out there authentically, you may attract some men that you may not consider to be the right man, man for you, but you're also going to be attracting in more people that you do resonate with when you're showing up authentically real and you, and you still get to be the person that determines, I like to say, who gets a, who gets admission or a scholarship into your university of dating. You still get to be your own admissions director and scholarship director. And if, if women can look at that as being like, I'm flattered that so many people are finding me attractive, you know, coming back to the movie analogy you were talking about, rather than looking at that as a negative and just saying, I just get to sift through these individuals and choose who I am resonating with as well then it can be um, a little bit more of an upbeat experience if you feel like you also draw in some men that may not be quite right for you, right? Yeah, and if you think about it like, you know, like you're blooming, like you're a flower, let's say you're a rose. So you bloom and, you know, some people are gonna like that flower and some people aren't. But either way, you still got to bloom. So you were still being you and being your fullest expression and being happy. And if they liked it, great, if they didn't, okay, you were still blooming. So it's not, I can't be that until somebody validates me. It's I'm choosing to validate myself. I'm awesome, I'm fantastic, I'm blooming and I'm happy. And if they're interested and it looks like a match, great, I can invite that in. If they're not interested, I don't really care because I'm still happy. My world is not dependent on their response. Right, that's right, that's the key right there. That's the key right there. And also just one other distinction I think that's important too is, you know what, there's nothing wrong with wanting to look nice. There's nothing wrong with putting effort into your appearance. If you like to rock the heels, if you like to rock the dress or the lipstick or whatever, you know, that's part of you being authentic or that could be a part of your self-expression. And taking good care of yourself is a part of showing that you consider yourself to be worthy of love. And so I, I did want to make that distinction, but I think what you're saying is it's not just all about that outward appearance. It goes yeah, much yeah. deeper than that if you're really going to have a tune in instead mm -hmm. of just on. coming back to your first point. Those were just a couple of distinctions that I thought might also be helpful here in this conversation. 100%. Yeah, I'm glad you added those in.
Yeah. Yeah. So um, in addition to what we've already talked about, Ken, um, what I, I think we've already alluded to this, the number one way to attract quality men consistently is through your authenticity, through being you, through being real, through showing up authentically. Um, what are some other ways that you've found really make a difference for a woman to really connect with the with the with a man? Well, it's great that um, I love the way you frame that. That you know that that's the number one way. It's actually part of it, right? And that's what we think. Okay, so this is it. But there's another piece that people skip because you attract what you believe, not what you ask for. Mm -hmm. So if you believe, yeah, I do all these things, but nobody really likes it, or it's, I can meet somebody, but it's always a struggle. Whatever you believe, you're going to be validated by what you attract. So it's your beliefs. This is why so many people will say things like, well, I'm doing all this work. I don't know, whatever law of attraction. I'm trying to envision this person. Yeah, I'm doing that stuff. So they don't really believe it. They're going through the motions. Mm, yeah, that's it. That's right? So it's like, well, I literally had this woman tell me the other day, She's a PhD in psychology. She's got all this, you know, background and working on the mindset and this stuff. And she goes, oh, I'm doing all that jazz. And I said, oh, great. So you don't even believe it. You're a PhD. Like, it doesn't matter. It's, again, your beliefs are a vibration. And when you're vibrating at a high vibration, you believe in it, you're confident, you're excited about it. Guess what? You're going to attract other high vibration things. And the low vibration things won't resonate. They won't even have an effect. So this is the number one key is you're keeping that high vibration. You're showing up energetically aligned with your truth. And here's the secret to know if you're not. And this is really easy because we all do it. <laughs> so first of all, you know, a belief is not, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm supposed to do that. And everybody says you're supposed to do that. I believe in it. Theoretically, it makes sense. Yeah, but, you know, I never I never experienced it. So it's kind of like a fantasy. Your yeah, but, that yeah, but you threw in there is what tells you that you're misaligned, that your energy is not lining up with what you're doing, mm -hmm. because you're actually saying, not really. I'm going to say all these things, but not really. I'm not even going to let them in. So that's your indicator. And some people say, yeah, but, or they say, but, or, you know, there's different ways of saying it, but you've got to have that alignment. And if you're just going through the motions, and I'll tell you, most people are. I mean, it's, it's, it's a funny thing, right? Um, if you look at, you know, so many people are studying law of attraction, which is fantastic. But if they weren't resisting it, the definition of law of attraction is once they engage it, it would happen. The reason it's not happening is they're not really going there. They're still in disconnect with that belief. It makes sense. It's logical. They'd love for it to be true, but they want proof. So if you're waiting for proof, you're disconnecting from what's true for you. So you're undermining your belief, which means you're going to attract that, that denial, not the thing that you really want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our minds and our beliefs are so incredibly powerful. So we can be doing, quote unquote, the right things on the outside, even mm -hmm. going through the motions. And yet if our beliefs are sabotaging us in one level, and sometimes it's tricky because they're unconscious in many cases. Um, then it's it, we're still not going to be on that vibrational or energetic level that's going to draw in the right kind of person. Yeah. And so it's not something you can fake. No, and that's why I wanted to make sure you understood that, like saying yeah, but or whatever your language is that discredits what you just said, that's your external and conscious representation, right? So it could be a subconscious belief that I don't buy this, but it's expressing itself in a way that is conscious. It's available for you to catch and go, wait a minute. Why did I just say, yeah, but, oh, I better look at that because clearly there's a disconnect. Mm -hmm. So there's always tells, there's always signs. And that's what we have to tune into so we can actually notice, oh, did I just say, yeah, but again? I, I used to say, but, uh. So I'd say, da, 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 and I'd say, but, uh, and I'd come up with the reason why it probably isn't going to work or whatever. And my friend used to go, there's no butter. And I thought she was saying butter. No butter. <laughs> you say butter all the time. I'm like, I do. And once she got me aware of that, I catch myself. And now I don't do it anymore. 
because it just sounds horrible when I hear that. I know that that means I'm not really aligned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess the key here is, is if you feel like you're authentically representing yourself out there and yet there's a disconnect within the belief system in terms of what you believe you deserve or what you can have or what you think is possible, then you can quote unquote be doing what you think is going to be effective for you, but it's still, you can still be sabotaging. Yeah, Without absolutely. Meaning to, obviously. And the thing is, it, it has to be motivated by your truth. Like it has to be your reason for doing it. Not, oh, my friend lost 10 pounds and then she found this great guy. So maybe I just need to lose 10 pounds and that'll do it for me. That's not your truth. That's because you were trying to be like her to have the results she had. You have to be like you to have the results she had. You have to be in, in alignment for yourself. So I had a woman I worked with and she had come out of a divorce after 25 years and uh, or out of a marriage, she'd been divorced. And she said her happiest part of the entire process, like she's like, you know, obviously I wish our marriage would have worked, but it didn't. She said, when we met, we were both really young and very active people. We actually met at a gym and loved, you know, doing that kind of thing. And as time went on, he did less of it. And she still did it because she thought that's why he loved her. And she actually was exhausted. She hated it. But she went to the gym every single day. And she said, every minute on that treadmill, I resented. Because I literally thought that was the only reason he cared about me. She goes, but obviously it proved that wasn't it. Because we got divorced, even though I look like I did when I was in my 20s. I look amazing. and that didn't stop it. It had nothing to do with that. She was being false to herself. She wasn't showing up. It was the resentment probably played a big role, right? If she's going and doing this, not being true to herself and resentful, well, do you think that energy doesn't come home? Mm. Of course it does. And who knows what else was going on, right? Well, I bring that up because we get attached to this idea and it's like, but it, what's true for you right now? When you're blooming and being your best self, it's fun. You're just having a good time. And so none of the other parts really matter. You're like, hey, if that works out, it's a bonus. It's icing on the cake. But either way, I'm going to have cake. <laughs> I'm yeah. happy. Right, right. It's a better way to live your life. It's a more satisfying yeah. way to live your life. Yeah. And um, I also think it makes it feel like, um, I don't know, it feels like a more faith-filled approach, for lack of a better way to say it, Ken, because you're not feeling like, you have to like be in the struggle so to to find someone. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, there's so many women that you and I talk to who all of the fun and joy and lightness have been pulled out of this love, dating, and relationship uh, concept mm -hmm. because it just can feel so heavy and like hard work and like such a struggle. And yeah. the approach that we're talking about, it just feels so much more joyful for lack of a better way to say it it's more faith-filled it's more trusting it's not you're not like down in the struggle if you will absolutely and you know it's it, it reminded me of something i learned from dr wayne dyer which is you know there's two kinds of motivation there's what's called deficiency motivation which is where you're trying to change something that's wrong with you i'm not enough this i'm not enough that but the problem is even if you do that you'll still not feel like you're enough that never stops. You just keep thinking of what else is missing. The other approach is growth motivation, where you go, you know what? I'm great the way I am, and I can't wait to keep growing. Totally different motivation, because you're not trying to fill a hole that can't be filled. Mm -hmm. That enough hole can never be filled. But when you embrace where you are, because you're not comparing yourself to everybody else, because that's totally irrelevant, they started someplace different than you and they're going someplace different than you. Where are you and what's going on for you? Cool. Mm -hmm. What's fabulous about you right now and how else do you want to grow? Now you're being that rose. You bloomed and you're like, yeah, I can't wait to bloom some more. But I'm not going, oh, I didn't bloom right. I haven't bloomed enough. I better fix that. How do I get rid of all these thorns? None of that's relevant. You're just going, hey, I am what I am. I don't look like that one. I don't look like that one. I don't look like those daisies over there. I'm this rose and I want to keep going. That's exciting. That's motivating, mm -hmm. right? Not, oh, I'm broken and I got to fix something. Right, right. Yeah, it's a whole different level of, 
approaching your self growth and development and progress. Yeah, I really like I really like this conversation, Ken, and I think it's a really important one. And I'm really glad we've been able to visit these ideas. Um, is there anything else you want to share about this, or anything I could have asked you that you would like to still add to <laughs> on this topic? Well, I just want to you know kind of summarize because you know we think about how do we attract things, right? Well. The universe doesn't hear your words, right? When you're mm. praying or meditating or whatever, asking for what you want, it's your vibration. It's all vibrational. The world's energy. We already know that. Quantum physics has proven it. It's all energetic and it's different vibrations. And if they match, bing, they come together. If they don't, they have no business with each other. They're irrelevant. So if you're down here and you're asking for this, it's impossible to receive it. Your job is to raise your elevation to where you want to be. And then you'll attract those things. That's why blooming and being happy about yourself and excited about life and going, hey, I'm great where I am. Higher vibration than, oh, I have to still do this and that, and this is gonna happen and that'll take several years. I'm not where I wanna be in my career. Well, disconnect. So you gotta give yourself that, that space of, I'm okay the way I am and I'm growing. I'm not done. Oh, I'm stuck with this. No. As soon as you embrace where you are, you can move forward. But until you do, you keep trying to backfill that hole of not enough. So know that the message you're sending is through your vibration and you will receive exactly what, what matches that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Ken. This has been a really important conversation. And I'm really glad you um, are sharing on this topic because I think it'll help a lot of people. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, I just, I can't emphasize enough how much I agree that our minds and our thoughts are so incredibly powerful. I, I actually believe when we are um, thinking thoughts, we're actually in the creative process. And so we want to be aware of what we're creating with our thoughts. You think about anything in your life important that you created, it began in your mind and heart. You, you created it internally before you create it in the outside of your life. If you set a goal or you accomplish something, you created it. And so I feel like we have to be aware of what we're creating in our minds and bringing those things to the surface, you know, noticing if you're saying the yeah, but, or the but, or whatever afterwards and having an awareness around this. I mean, that one thing I think could transform people's lives. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. And it's, it's again, it's, it's a simple thing, but it's bringing awareness to it instead of just letting it slide over the day. So, Ken, as always, it's really a delight to connect with you again. And I really appreciate your contribution here and your contribution to my events over the years. It really means a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, it's my pleasure, Michelle. I'm so happy to contribute. Thank you. And everybody, uh, we really want to acknowledge you and appreciate you also for watching because... You know, we live in a busy world and we know there's a lot of places you can spend your time. And the fact that you're here says something about you. It's a compliment to you that you are the kind of woman who wants to have an extraordinary life and extraordinary relationships. And so we honor and commend you for being here too and look forward to seeing you for more. Bye for now.